In this video, we will discuss when to replace the micro SD card in your Helium hotspot and how to do it. I will take you through all the relevant steps to flash the micro SD card and discuss a few troubleshooting points at the end of this video. Note that this video applies for all Rack, MNTD and original Helium hotspots. Hey folks, this is Roy and welcome back to my channel Eigentech. First, let us discuss when should you replace the micro SD card. If your Helium miner is using the 32GB memory card, it is highly recommended that you upgrade it now. The original Helium miner, Rack version 1, version 1.5 and version 2 as well as earlier batches of MNTDs use 32GB memory card. If you do not upgrade it, your miner will still work but it is expected that there will be a downtime of several days in a given month. This is because the blockchain, the Helium blockchain size has grown beyond 27 GB. The second reason is of course if your memory card fails. So the question is how to detect whether the memory card has failed or is still working. There are two direct ways of doing it and a few indirect ways. So if you are using RAC or MNTDs, you know there are two LED lights here beside the antenna. One of them is red when it's turned on and the other one is green. The green one turns on uh, for a few times when you power it up but then it turns off. So under the normal operation you should see only the solid red light. However, if you see that the green LED is blinking or is solid green, that means the micro SD card has failed and you need to replace it. To learn about the disk error is to run the diagnostics. If you run the diagnostics and see that there is some type of error, for example here you can see it says read only or something similar, then you also know that your disk has failed and you need to replace it. Now there are a few indirect ways. Let's say your miner has stopped earning and when you run the diagnostics, you see that uh, the blockchain height, for example, you just note down this blockchain height uh, and after uh, a day or after several hours, you see that this blockchain height is not increasing. Even though you have good internet connection indicated by this outbound and inbound, that would indicate also that uh, your disk has failed and it might need a replacement. The third situation would be you find that your miner is not earning and when you try to run the diagnostics, the miner cannot pair with your mobile phone. So you can restart your miner, wait for several minutes and still the Helium app cannot pair with the uh, miner. That would indicate there is some corruption of the micro SD card. Note that the main reason of micro SD card failure is that it goes through a lot of reading and writing cycles. So the next question is, what are the things that are needed? Of course, you need a micro SD card. Helium suggests using a 64 GB memory card, but here I'm going to use a 120 GB memory card. So this is from SanDisk, a high endurance card. And this one comes with a adapter. So note that the card that actually you need is the micro SD card and not a regular SD card. Uh, in my laptop, I have already a uh, SD card reader. That is why I have purchased with the adapter. If your computer doesn't have one, you might have to buy one USB to micro SD or SD card reader that you can easily purchase from Amazon or some other site. The other optional thing you might need is a tweezer because you will see later on that it's slightly difficult to take the memory card out using your hand. So it's better to use a tweezer for that. All right, let us now begin the process. First, you need to have the snapshot. So there are two sites from where you can download the snapshot. The first one is from the Helium itself and the second one is from MNTD. I'll leave the links in the description. In this case, I'm going to use the Helium snapshot. So here, if you scroll down, uh, you'll see this is the link to use the to get the snapshot. So this will be a valid snapshot. However, the page might not be updated with the recent snapshot. The way to check it is, uh, is using this link, qa.io. I will leave the link in the description. So you can see that the latest version is 2022.02.04.0. Okay. So we'll copy this link here and paste in the browser, but replace this part with 0204.0 and just click enter. And you'll see that here uh, you can download this image. Similarly, you can also download the MNTD version as well, this one, but I have learned that this particular version has some problems. So we might use the earlier version, which is 01 underscore 04, then user underscore IMG and using that link. So this is downloaded already. The next thing is to use, uh, you have to use a software to flash it. 
So you can do it otherwise, but it's easy to use this software. So it's called uh, balena.io. So you just click this link and then it will detect your operating system and you can just download the version that you need. Once the download is completed, we'll install it and you'll see that the flashing is really very easy. Okay, so the installation, the download is not complete. So we'll just go, we'll just run the exe file and I agree and let it finish the installation. It's pretty quick, it takes about only a few seconds. Okay, so the interface has popped up after the installation is completed. Now we will put this uh, SD card into the adapter and insert in my computer. So you can see that I am using, here it shows one, one and nine GB. So here automatically the software detected the card, but if you have multiple options, you can always change it here. Now we want to do the flashing from a file. So we'll just select the file. So it's, uh, I have saved it in the downloads, just select it. So don't need to unzip or anything, just use the raw file and then just click on flash. Now there will be three steps. Uh, so there will be a pop-up asking for permission, just say yes, otherwise it will not go through. So the first step is decompressing and it also shows you the speed uh, It's about 30 Mbps and estimated time left is few seconds. Let us just wait. So it's done. The next step is flashing, which is basically writing this information into the card, which is happening at the rate of around 26 Mbps in my case. Only takes a few seconds. The third part is the validating. So it's just validating whatever it has written into the card. So because it has, a, there is a new partition. So the windows already popped up this extra stuff. I can just, just simply go back to this one and you can see that it says that flash is completed. Also it says that successful target. If it's not successful, you will get a message that it is not successful and then you just simply retry. This software automatically ejects the card. So it's no longer into the system. If I just go here, cancel, you'll see that this location is not available. So you can see it's not there. So I will just simply reinsert it to show you that the flashing is completed. So now a bunch of things pop up because because some of the partitions are not recognized by the Windows system. So you can see now there is a drive which says now USB drive only has 32 MB and then there is a SDXC. So to check uh, what the partition looks like, we can go to the uh, partition manager and let it load the information. And here you can see that it has a, it's a fat system, 32 MB of primary, then 1000 MB of another look partition, and then something is unallocated. So you don't need to check all this. I'm just showing you here. Basically the card is ready for mounting. We will do that. And when you do that, actually this unallocated memory is allocated. I have also taken a snapshot of that. I can show you here. Here I'd like to mention that uh, what I did was flashing, but you can also clone the memory card as well. So if you just go here and uh, remove this one, you can see that there is an option to clone the drive as well. So if you select that then, but the problem with cloning is that uh, you have to have both SD cards mounted simultaneously into the system so that you can do the cloning. Also note that it's recommended to do cloning for rack version one because there is something called a swarm key which is actually saved inside the micro SD card. So you should clone it. Uh, if you don't want to clone it, you can still use the snapshot, but then there is a configuration file in the original SD card which came with the original rack version one minor. Then you have to copy that configuration file or you have to just copy the swarm key into the new file. And uh, I can show you where to copy it. So in the, this F drive, there is a config file here. So inside that you have to copy the swarm key. Also, I'll recommend if you are using rack version one, you should always keep a backup of the original SD card so that you do not lose the swarm key. So basically keep a copy of the config file. That is what is needed. All right. The next step is to take the old card out of the miner and put the new one into it. So in the rack, uh, here is a tape on the side of the antenna. You just simply take that tape out. 
and there you can see there is a micro SD card maybe I'll just show you here so you can see there's a card here so it's actually pretty difficult to take it out with a hand so I'll use a tweezer so that it comes out easily here is the card so it is a 32 GB card and I'll simply take the new card and you have to remember the direction so basically it has to be like this so it will go in and the next step is to connect the antenna back and then power it up the next step is to ensure that your new card is working properly for that after powering up your miner you have to give it several minutes so that it, it can completely boot up and then it will be able to connect to your helium app using bluetooth so you run the diagnostics and right after that you will see that the blockchain sync is 0% and the block height is 1 so once you have connected it to the internet and then you should wait for a few tens of minutes so i think i have waited for several uh, let me check the time so we can see almost uh, 20 minutes more than 20 minutes here then you can run the diagnostics again and at that point you should see that the blockchain height has appeared so basically it has expanded that uh, snapshot and now this is the latest blockchain height uh, into the system and you can also see the percentage here so note down this number at this point actually you can just leave it for completely syncing uh, however you can run the diagnostics again after some more time and in this case I ran it after more than 10 minutes later or around 20 minutes later and what you should see that the block height should now increase so you can and that clearly tells you that your system is now completely online and it's sticking to the blockchain and once the syncing is completed it will start mining and finally a few troubleshooting points let's say you went through all these steps however when you try to power up your miner and wait for several minutes it cannot still connect to your helium app using bluetooth you restarted it several times and it still fails in that case first make sure that the uh, card is inserted properly so that it has the right orientation and also it has gone well inside the slot uh, if this is the case and you are still failing to pair it that could indicate that either the snapshot is corrupted or the flashing process itself didn't go correctly in that case simply retry doing the flashing or you can use an earlier version of the snapshot which is known to be working then you can also keep an eye on the blockchain height by rerunning the diagnostics and make sure that the blockchain height is increasing if it's not increasing or showing something weird like say undefined or something that could also indicate that the um, file is corrupted or the flashing didn't go correctly and finally if you are using a rack version one make sure that you copy the config file or copy the swarm key into the new card I hope this information was useful to you. If you have any more questions, let me know in the comment section. That's all for today. Thanks for watching guys and get cryptonized.